Support TYT by shopping on Amazon through the link below. New numbers out from the Pew Research Center about the wealth gap in America. Uh, the numbers, as usual, are not good. Uh, let me show you the trends that have happened in this country uh, from 1983 to the year 2013, which is the years that they track. This is a comparison of upper income median net growth compared to uh, middle income families. So back in 1983, the number was 3.4, the gap between upper and middle income households. Today it's at 6.6, .6. it's at a record high. So upper income growth is 6.6 .6 times greater than middle income growth. So the rich are getting much richer and at twice the rate they were back in 1983. So it has not abated at all. Now remember in the 1980s we were told that it's okay, we're going to do Reaganomics and we're going to give a lot of breaks to the rich. We're going to give tax cuts, we're going to do, you know, be, give subsidies to corporations and, and all these different advantages, right? But it's okay because it's going to trickle down to you. Well, the evidence is in. It's not like 1980 was a couple of years ago. We've had a long, long time to look at the numbers. Now it's been about 33 years. And in this period, we're looking at 30 years there that was tracked. It has not trickled down. I mean, of course, it depends on your definition of trickle down. Something's trickled down on our head, right? But the money has gone completely up. Now, that's compared to middle income people. Now, get a load of this comparison. Those same upper income families are now nearly 70 times wealthier than low income families, also a record gap. 70 times. Okay. Now, look, I'm a capitalist. Um, you know, I, I, I want to be rich, uh, I believe in the American dream. Uh, and as I look at some of these uh, countries, um, I think, okay, uh, I'm not sure I'd want to live in Denmark, okay, given uh, their structure and how uh, things are incentivized there. I'll show you that in a little bit. Uh, but this is outrageous. This is beyond all bounds of reason. Okay, let me show you what's happened in our so-called economic recovery lately. So uh, the income wealth uh, between 2010 and 2013. Well, okay, good, upper income, uh, we have had an economic recovery, has gone from $595,300 to all the way up to $639,400. Now, that's not your income, that's your wealth, okay, I should be clear about that. So that's the wealth for the, for the upper income brackets, okay, so that went up, great, we have an economic recovery. Well, when you look at uh, middle income, not so much. Uh, middle income families were absolutely flat as $96,500. And when you look at lower income families, not only did they not go up, they dropped from 10,500 to 9,300. So we're, and that's under President Obama. That's under our so-called economic recovery. Where's the recovery for us? If you're middle income, no recovery at all. And if you're lower income, you've lost ground during the recovery, the so-called recovery. Gee, I wonder why Democrats couldn't get people out to vote. I mean, you delivered in spades for the rich, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you know, if you're doing an economic recovery, the rich should get richer too. But so should the middle class, and so should the poor. But it didn't happen for the rest of us. So that's why people couldn't get excited about President Obama. It's not that complicated, and it has nothing to do with all these fake scandals that Republicans talk about. It's not like people are like, oh, I really got to go vote against Obama if you're a middle class family who's an independent and is not knee deep in Fox News or Republican or Democratic politics. They weren't out there going like, oh, Benghazi, let me go vote. No, they were out there, well, where, where, where's the recovery? I don't see it because they didn't, because they literally didn't see it. It didn't come to that. Now, one more chart. Now, unfortunately, we don't have it for you here. So you're going to have to take my word for it. I don't know where it went. Anyway. Uh, but it's an important part of the story. When you look at this chart, you've got uh, three different categories here. Um, bottom 90%, top 10%, and then top 1%. And it ranges from Denmark to the United States. When you look at Denmark's chart, uh, the bottom 90% uh, actually have a very solid share of the income growth from 1975 to 2007. Uh, the top 1%, not that much. The top 10% have about 10% of the share, which is amazing, right? Um, and then as you go through Portugal, Sweden, Spain, etc., uh, the top 1% and the top 10% get more and more and more, uh, but it's not really out of control until you get to 
Australia, UK, Canada, and the US. But look at the US numbers. They are stunning. This is share of income growth from 1975 to 2007. About 50%, almost half of the entire growth went to just the top 1%. And the top 10% got about 80% of the growth. 80% of the growth. And when you look at all the countries combined, you see that it didn't have to be so. It's not like this is what normally happens, this is a normal evolution of economics. No, it's how you set the rules. Denmark set the rules one way, France set them another way, they got different results. We set them a third way and we got dramatically different results. And it's obvious from the numbers that we set the rules in favor of the rich. Of course, and it never trickled out, it wasn't supposed to trickle down. This chart is exactly what they intended. They don't look at this and say, oh shoot, look at that income inequality. They look at this and think, mission accomplished. Look man, you don't have to be a wild-eyed socialist to say that chart is insane. I, I, I believe in capitalism. I, I run a corporation. The Young Turks is an LLC, it's a corporation technically. I'm a business owner. I, I, I want the rich to get a good share of the income, definitely. But this is insane. This is insane. How can you look at it and not see that it's insane? 80% of the income goes, goes to just the top 10%. 50% basically goes to just the top 1%. It doesn't have to be that way. When they tell you that that's what capitalism is, they're lying to you. All those other countries have really strong uh, economies, uh, companies, you name it. They, they're, not, they're not in squalor, they're doing perfectly fine. It's just that the income is shared in different ways and everybody who works shares in it at least to some degree. How can anybody look at all these numbers and say that trickle-down economics worked? No person who's actually honest can say that. So if you hear someone on TV telling you that, you know that they're doing it for a purpose because they're in the bracket who made out like bandits and they don't want you to know the truth.